Hello everyone and welcome to A Brit in Germany in England! <laughs> I'm on holiday in England. I'm back home. This is part one of German words in the English language. You probably know a lot more German than you think because in the English language there are lots of words that stem from the German language. A tradition here on a Brit in Germany is that we do quiz questions and I found this beer mat that is a map of Germany and on the back are some quiz questions. So we're going to do the quiz together. In this first video, we'll do four questions, okay? So here we go. Get your pens and papers ready. Yeah, it's quiz time. <laughs> oh, uh, uh. the answers are on the beer mat, but I promise I'm not going to peek, so it's fair. And this is question number one. Name the nine countries which border Germany. There's Poland, there's Austria, there's Hungary, there's Liechtenstein. No? Okay. Well, okay, um, I thought Liechtenstein was bordering it. There's uh, Switzerland, one of my favorite countries, Denmark, France, Belgium, did I say Belgium? And that's all I can think of right now. So we'll continue. Question two is, which city hosts the outrageous beer festival of excessive beer drinking known as Oktoberfest? That's easy, that's Munich. Question number three, what is the capital of Germany? Mm, Berlin. Everyone knows that question. And the last question today is, which river running through Germany is Europe's third longest? Well, it's either the Rhine or the Elbe, but because the Rhine is more popular, I'm going to say the Rhine. So let's have a look at the answers. The nine countries which border Germany are Austria, Belgium, the Czech Republic, Denmark, France, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Poland, and Switzerland. Well done if you got all those right. I only got about four or five. Which city hosts the outrageous beer festival? That was Munich. What is the capital of Germany? Berlin. The river running through Germany, which is Europe's third longest, is the River Rhine. So well done if you got those four right. I got three out of four. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the list of German words in the English language. And the first word we're gonna look at is Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude means the pleasure derived from the misfortune of others. And it comes from the German words Schaden, which is damage, and Freude, which is joy. An example of Schadenfreude is once I was at the bus stop and there was a woman next to me just about to get onto the bus and the wind came along from nowhere and blew her ticket out of her hand and she started to run into the street and chase it, trying to grab it, you know, jumping. That was a moment when I had to smile and giggle a bit. I felt bad afterwards, but that's a good example of schadenfreude. Do you have any examples of schadenfreude? Let me know in the comments. You probably have heard of the next word, which is strudel. A strudel is a pastry made with either fruit or cheese, and it's rolled up in very thin layers of dough, and then it's baked. My favorite strudel is apple strudel. Mm, delicious, warm, pastry, melted apple, bubbling, oh, beautiful. And did you know that the German word strudel means a whirlpool? Perhaps there's a link between the motion of the whirlpool and the way that the strudel is rolled up. There could be a link there. The next German word, which you definitely know, probably, is aspirin. It's pronounced a bit differently. Aspirin. 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 The next German word is angst. The German word angst means anguish, worry, or fear. You're in a ghost house and you feel frightened. That's when you have angst. If you're scared of something, in German you would say, ich habe angst vor da 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 da, the thing that you're scared of. Ich habe angst vor Hunde. That would mean I'm scared of dogs. The next German word I have is abseil. Abseil comes from the German verb abseilen. Ab means to go down and seil is a rope. Another word for table football is Fußball with an S. The German word for football is Fußball, so obviously there's a link there with the sound. In Germany they call it Tischfußball or Kicker. The German people have used a an English word kicker and we've used a word that sounds like a German word. We sort of swap languages there. How can you say that better? I don't know. The next word in my little mini German influence dictionary is Gesundheit. When someone sneezes, uh, we tend to say bless you, but in American English they say Gesundheit and in Germany Gesundheit means basically health. 
what you're saying is uh, someone sneezing, oh, get better soon, health, or um, yeah, protect my health from you. <laughs> Kaput, ruined, destroyed, defeated. Kaput is a German word, but they use a double T at the end, and we use one T at the end of our kaput. Most commonly we use kaput when something breaks. Like, oh my lamp's kaput. The lamp broke. <laughs> this one's pretty interesting, Neanderthal. Neanderthal is named after the place in the Rhine region where the first Homo sapien remains were found. So that's where... <laughs> actually, that's a mistake. It's actually Homo neanderthalensis. Okay, continue watching. The place is called Das Neandertal, and that's near Dusseldorf. Tal means valley, so it's basically the Neander Valley. The next word you definitely know, a noodle, aka pasta. In Germany they spell it differently, they write it with the... well, you'll see here how they write it. Poltergeist, which you probably know from the film. In German, poltern is a verb which means to rattle about and make noise, and the geist is ghost. And a poltergeist is a ghost responsible for noisy disturbances, knocking lamps over or throwing cushions around. Typical cheeky ghost behavior. And that's the end of part one. So tune in soon for part two, where we look at more German words in the English language.